we're live. Hopefully you guys are on board with me and you're watching this wherever you are. Thank you for joining me tonight here in Whangarei. It's a bit windy. It's been raining most of the week and the weekend and I'm excited to be back on. Been out of energy. As you, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't really like winter that much. My skinny bones can't handle it. Um, I've always not, you know, I, I like the rain, but um, the coldness really annoys me, uh, and it zaps my energy. And just yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm a summer person. Being dark skinned and being from Fiji, you know, you love the heat and winter, so it doesn't work for me. So tonight, 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 wherever you are, we're going to talk about anime because I love anime. I've just um, I've watched anime for a few years, and I enjoy it because it's just there's so much amazing stuff so the other week all right uh must have been two weeks few few you know a few days ago uh i plugged in i went you know what i want to i want to watch uh, magic you know something to do with magic adventure uh i want to watch an anime that's you know yeah it's got all that sort of stuff now so this came up out of the, you know out of the blue it came up on the list it was orphan sorcerer uh that's what it's called. And then it was called Sorceress Deva Orphan, which is the original name in Japanese. Uh, uh, ma Majutsu Majutsushi Orphan. Orphan? Yep. And okay, so Sorcerer Orphan. All right, so this came out, in, um, in, let me just get my facts right here. All right, so it came out, it was originally published in 1994 and ran for about, whew, and for about what is that six plus three years so that's about almost nine years this this 20 volume manga series ran for nine years and um it's written by uh yoshi nubu akita and uh also and illustrated by yuya Kusa, kusaka right and published by fujima Shobo, and I'm probably going to get all that wrong, but I try my best at pronouncing names as I can. So, now the demographic was for males, right? Uh, the English publisher for this was J no Novel Club, um, and imprint Fujima Fantasia Bunko, and through the magazine Dragon Magazine. All right, so now there was light novels, uh, and then later on in 1998 they put out a anime anime version of it. Now it's got a of course, when you've got a 20 volume series, there's going to be a lot more in depth stuff to it. Now, with um, when it came to anime, it just jumps you right in, right? So the anime is basically about a, about a guy, probably I think around about 18, 19, uh, who's got a who's who's a sorcerer, who's who's broken away from his, uh, you know, uh, what is that? I can't even remember now from Harry Potter, whatever school they go to, right? So he's he's broken away from the sorcerer school, and um, he was an orphan himself. This young kid, and he had a friend who's uh, who was older than him, probably about I think around about ten female, and they both were uh, had magic in them, you know. Uh, these so whenever the, um, the sorcerers who find uh, master sorcerers or whatever find uh, or hear about magic inside people in this world uh they grab them and take them to school them right which is what you do right if you find someone with talent you take them over to a specialized school and go hey go learn art go learn music all right uh here's a scholarship so basically they got a scholarship they were orphans came out of orphanage and they went and got a scholarship so a terrible thing happened over the years as they grew up uh the female um character um basically you know decided she wanted more power and there's a reason behind that i'm not going to spoil this for you because it's a very very good anime i love this anime i thought it was really good that's what i'm talking about otherwise I'll, i won't talk about the things that i'm not interested about and if i don't find special now so so he breaks so the character basically uh, turns into it straight straight tells you it's, it turns into dragon this female character and she uh falls out you know of course it's a huge dragon right um and so orphan 
he's, he's got a different name and he breaks away from this school, uh, the sorcerer school. And he goes off on his own he, to try to help this female who's become a dragon now, right? Who's all powerful, this dragon. Don't know how to communicate with this dragon because they're just being dragonese, I guess. So he's out there for six years trying to find a way to help this person, uh, this dragon turn back into human again, right? And so he breaks away against the school, against his master, and he goes off on his own. And then he ends up uh, finding a young kid who's also got a talent for magic. And he adopts the kind of, doesn't adopt, but mentors the kid. Now, so there's a special sword, right? So I'm, I'm building this little thing up without trying to spoil it. There's a special sword that's very powerful that they go after, right? So like, kind of like the philosopher's stone kind of thing, right? Right, so... They go on this journey, and they they're joined by a, a young girl uh, who's probably about 16, 17. I, I reckon they'll be about. It's weird w with anime because the thing about anime is that they all uh, the the characters have to look a certain way, but their age is very different, and people get all weirded out about the way the age is done. Um, and uh, and I don't, you know. They don't say this is how old this character is, but you can tell she's about 18, 17, 18, and he's probably about 19, 20, right? So the, and then there's got a young kid who's about probably about 15. And the father owns a cafe, bar kind of thing, and lets the kid, uh, you know, lets the lets orphan hang out with them for free and eat the food for free while he teaches. And this is part of the anime, not the not the manga, the anime. So while he teaches his kid how to um his son uh how to be you know, a better uh, sorcerer himself. So the three of them go on a journey trying to find ways to help. Now, it's a very, 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 very good anime. It's so well developed. The characters are so well developed. The journey is, it's like each story, each episode is a, um, is a story on its own, right? So there's a start and an end to each little um, episode. Uh, sometimes they cross over in two episodes. But there's about all up. There's about 24 episodes for this first series. Now I know recently when I saw this, I suddenly saw this uh, when I was looking on um, on YouTube later, and I was like, "Wait, Funimation is trying to bring out a new one? What is this?" Anyway, so this and this is before I even knew. You know, I had already watched it before this came out. This new um, ad that they're going to bring. I mean, trailer for this new series that they're bringing out. So 20 volumes crunched down into a 24 episode series from start to finish very good each episode very good and it's and there is a very interesting uh, pair of uh, young also very old kids it's kind of weird because they're like they're, they're like dwarfs or midgets or whatever you want to call them little people uh, who are, who are kind of like the the comedic relief right of this whole thing that called jesters and their journey uh, and they try to steal this, they steal the sword and they just, you know, take off trying to make money off the sword. So they're chasing the sword and they're chasing the dragon. Now, there's an episode where they turn up in the special place that looks like it, Italy. It's, or Venice, sorry, I should say Venice. It looks like Venice in this world. And it's really interesting because they, uh, they meet a character called Roberta, right? Out of the blue. Out of the blue, and this is what we're going to talk about. Why I'm talking about this tonight is about how this anime deals with this specific character who's part of the LGBT community, right? And this is remember, this is written in '93, sorry, '96, right? All the way back in '96, and May came out two years later because it's very popular. So the cool thing is, like, I'm always about the story. When and um, when it, because as a writer, right, I'm always thinking about how how do I develop the story? What is my character's drive? Because you you character has to have a drive. Why do they do what they do? And uh, what's their reason? What's their purpose in life? Why are they doing? So as you know, so often's purpose right from start is I am going to try to bring my friend back from being a dragon to merge, to turn it back into the female, you know, that I adore, 
and he's he sees there's an older sister and they've had this older sister brother uh, relationship and uh, and it's just clean cut from from the start to finish so he's been running around for six years and now he's been waiting for six years for her to turn you know show up again she's been hiding somewhere right and come back um, because she's somehow able to disappear this dragon's able to disappear through to another dimension or to another place so he's waited six years and so they go on this journey after six years so they come up to this place which i, I would say italy venice right um and they meet roberta and roberta is this amazing character it's just this brilliant character she has her flaws she's so well developed um and you know and they you know there's episode one and then they're going to talk about something else and the episode the next episode comes up, and I'm not talking the numbers of the episode, I'm just talking about where it is. So it's somewhere in about six, seven, I think. I'm not sure. But he just says, Well, you know what? You talk, um, she basically, she has a ration. Uh, Roberta has a beau, right? Um, who likes her, uh, you know, um, and she likes him, and so, so on. Now, the cool thing about Roberta is she's a she's a sorcerer herself. She's been a sorcerer. She's been part of the school herself years ago. He knew her way back. So Orphan knew Roberta way back. Now, Roberta, he meets Roberta in Venice in this universe, right? Uh, and the place just looks like Venice, uh, and it just looks lovely. Uh, that's what I like about um, the great thing about anime is that. That you can you can just tell stories about anything, all right? You can, and you don't have to worry about just talking about superheroes all the time. You can talk about magic. You can talk about fantasy. You can talk about dragons. You can talk about, uh, you know, uh, what a slice of life like me just talking here with my friends, that sort of stuff. And I love those stories as well. Those stories are really cool, um, you know. And then you can talk about you know superpowered things like my hero academia or no game no life future fantasy you can talk about um, um supernatural stuff like demons angels fighting you can talk about gods and demons in different worlds uh, like uh uh i think seven deadly sins i hope that's right you know um that's the name or you can talk you know stuff like pokemon all that stuff so you can just basically break out and that's what i love about an a manga and anime and you about science fiction supernatural fantasy and you know, just start to finish great developed characters. And this is what I like about this show. It doesn't tell you this is what's gonna happen. It doesn't tell you this is what it, what you gotta expect in the show. It just, I'm telling you because I think you should watch it, right? That's my reason for why I'm doing this because I think it's a great series about sword and sorcery and magic. And uh, about these characters who are just fun and they go on an adventure full of action uh, and it's just so well developed. And remember, 96, right? 96 to, uh, I hope it was right. 96, I think it was on 93. 96 to 2003 is when the um, light novel came out. 94, sorry, my bad. But the anime came out in 98. Now, like I said, there's no, nothing telling you about nothing. It's a, it's a, mature audience watching things. So it just tells you, hey, if you're over 15, you can watch this. And this is what I love about uh, how anime works. Grading system, like this is for this, this is for this, this is for this, right? And this is the age group. So, Roberta is there and she does a magic thing. She helps them or whatever. Uh, and then she uh, kind of backstabs them and then she find, they find out why. Uh, you know, I'm just trying not to, to, to spoil it too much because I want you to watch it and appreciate this or even read the manga, right? Uh, the 20 volumes. I haven't got to the manga yet. Um, so, yeah. But, um, and later on, the, the way they develop the story, it just keeps going. And and, uh, and the cool thing is a young kid goes, um, so how do you know? You know, because, oh, I knew her from, you know, we were at sorcerer school together, right? And she goes, oh, but I knew him as Robert, right? And that's what he, he says, straight, straight up, tells him, tells a young kid exactly. And he goes, oh. And then he goes, um, 
does he know? And he's talking, he's talking about her partner at this time, right? And this is 94, guys, so, you know, way back. And so that was, what, 26 years ago, something like that. Um, and so he goes, well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. It's up to her. And the whole story just develops and develops. They go and do their thing for about 20-odd episodes. It's, remember, it's 24, and it ends beautifully. There is no huge hoo-ha about it. There's no big pushing whatever. It's just there. This is the great thing about what I like about this show. It's just like, here's a character. She's a sorcerer. This is what she was like. This is what she's now. And here it is. And, and, and it's just... It's just amazing little anime. It's very short. Like I said, it's 24. I mean, you can think about, I think it's, what is it, like uh, Pokemon, about 900 episodes or something like that, uh, and so on, you know. But this is just very short here. I'm, I think there's um, other ones they did later on. There was other, um, there's another run they did in, nine, um, I think there was, let me see. So there's other versions as well. Um, there was a Detour. There was a Reckless Journey. There was a Wayward Journey. And those are three. Um, so there's um, the light novel. The detour is two volumes. Um, so the manga, let me see, was eight, eight volumes, 20 volumes. It's just so many. Else. All right. So I want you guys to watch this and just enjoy it because I think it's a great time to watch something like this and um, see how Japan deals with characters. And it's just, especially these sort of characters, because there's a lot of who are about how Japan deals with certain characters now. And I don't like it um, because it's normally not Japanese people that are doing it. It's outsiders like myself who are going on about how, oh, you should be doing this, you should be doing that, you should be doing that. And when you look back, you know, when I look back at this um, series here, I go, 26 odd years ago, they were putting out this beautiful, you know, was it 22 years ago on the anime, uh, you know, 98. Uh, and it's just so great. It's just, it makes me feel good. It really makes me feel good about and appreciate the art form, which is an anime and manga much more. Uh, there is no placards. There is no protest. It's just, here it is. This is the character, this is what we're going to put in here, and it's beautifully done from start to finish. From when they start the character and show it, when, when Roberta shows up, and that's not her name, to when, because I'm trying to not give away, right? So when Roberta shows up to when the show ends. And um, I think when anime and manga and Japanese people do characters so much better, than what we see in Western um, comics, especially out of America. And, um, but I'm trying my best to, do, as, as a comic book creator, I'm trying my best to write characters that really, really, really uh, have a drive, have a reason for what they do, have a, um, have a direction, have a, you know, like I said, every character you put in has to have a purpose. Now, recently I wrote, um, I finished, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, I finished The Circle. Uh, and I because I was able to redo it, revise it, I was able to give my character so much more meaning and depth over that six issues that I hadn't done 10 odd years ago, or maybe 13 odd years ago when I was first, you know, uh, when I first started doing the comic book that's based on the, um, student feature film, which is 125 minutes long. No, sorry, 85 minutes long. I think it's about something like that. Um, and it was, you know, TV hour and a half, whatever, movie, feature movie. And I, because you're just showing and this, you know, stuff, I wasn't able to really give as much drive as I could now when rewriting it and re, uh, redoing the artwork, touching it up, redoing the um, the speech bubbles, redesigning the books, because it told, I was really going from looking at every single aspect of the story, looking at the characters, why why are they doing what they're doing? What is their purpose? And 
And I mentioned a couple of weeks ago about the whole I idea uh, of how, uh, I can't remember the name of R.E.M.'s um, singer, but at the time in the 90s, there was this whole thing. And, and remember, this is the time we're talking about 90s, 94, with, uh, around that time with uh, Nirvana, with Kurt Cobain being the biggest thing ever. Uh, when um, Teen Spirit came out, the song, you know, it smells like Teen Spirit. And um, Kurt was very angst about how um, he didn't want people to show up who, will, uh, who didn't like, who were anti-gay or, um, or anti-LGBT. And he did, and he was really out there saying it, saying, you know, if you don't like, don't, you know, if you don't like, if you're not upset about this thing, don't come to my shows. And the REM guy goes, Kurt, Kurt, that's not the way to reach an audience. That's not how to change minds. You know, don't, that's not how you how you um, get people on your side or make them think. You don't push people away. You invite them in. And and so I, I kind of kept that in my head for, I mean, like, we're talking about 25, 20, you know, 30 odd years ago. It was in my back of my head. And I remember this when I was thinking about um, when I was doing my comic, you know, when I was finishing it off the other week. Uh, oh, all right, I'll do a plug. Number issue number five is now on pre-order through risingsuncomics.com. But number six is coming out soon. But like I said, number six was very interesting for me because I was able to develop one of the characters the way I wanted to develop it, that I couldn't develop it, or didn't think about developing it that way. Because a movie is different to a comic book. A comic book, again, you know, um, you can really get into the character. And um, and I found that when I was when I was writing it, uh, re um, rewriting or revising it, um, I um, for the second edition. And way back when when I did it the first time around, about two thousand ten, uh, when I did this digital thing, it got downloaded about one hundred twenty thousand times. Uh, it's that's for free. I just you know it was out there for free, one hundred twenty thousand times. But it was really really not that great, uh, the way I'd done it. But it was downloaded hundred you know free comics and this was way back when uh web comics were a big thing uh i know web comics are still a big thing but back then it was just like this upcoming thing and uh you know with youtube and all that and youtube wasn't even there doing that thing i remember being on uh, youtube in 2007 uh doing a cooking show you know um and then putting this and the, the movie out in little pieces on on youtube actually so you know and I'm going to re-release the movie after the whole six episodes are out. And just because it's just, you know, there's a lot of swearing in it, you know, all this stuff. Uh, but it's M MA. So I was able to, I don't like trigger warnings, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago about this. And this is, the thing is that when you put trigger warnings and stuff and when you warn people off, they don't open or don't read or don't think because there's certain types of people that just go, nah. I can't be bothered with something like that. But if you just say, hey, I've written a book, here it is, read it if you want. You know, if, if this is your thing, if you like crime, read this. If you like anime, read this. This is the age group it's for. Um, so expect, don't expect it because it's mature stuff. Um, and so I was really able to get into the nitty gritty of the character. And I was also able to look at my own culture because I think he's like, I know like everybody wants to see themselves and the heroes that they see. And I think there is, there's a, there's a place for that, but the heroes or the characters have to be really well developed. You can't just go, you know, you know, like this is this. And so what's it about? No, this is, this is all this is. Oh, so he's a black character. Oh, what's his motivation? What does he read? What's his favorite song? Uh, what does he wear? Oh no, he's just black. Um, um, so is that all that's about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you gotta, you know, you gotta put it out there and say, uh, have you been to writing school? <laughs> have you learned how to write a book? Do you know you gotta really develop the character, you gotta give them family, you gotta give them um a job, you got to give them uh, interests, hobbies, uh, and all that. And this is one of the things we were taught. Like when you develop a character, you got to give them a drive. Why do they do what they do? 
um, not who they are, but what they are. What are they about? What are their interests? Uh, one of the things we was like, what songs did I listen to? What books did I like? Who are their friends? Uh, what types of people they hang out with? What do they wear, right? Because all of this defines who you are, not this. This is just makeup, right, at the end of the day, because we aren't just the skin color that we are we, or, or the sex we are or the gender we choose or whatever, right, or whatever we, you know, born as. What, what defines us is um, everything else, uh, you know, our culture, um, who, like I said, who we hang out with, what music we listen to. Me, I listen to metal. I, I listen to rap. I listen to hip-hop, all right? Um, I listen to jazz. I listen to blues, right? I don't even listen to my own um, uh, culture's music. I just don't find it interesting. There will be times that I like like it because there's some cool songs and stuff you can dance to, but that def doesn't define me. And I think this is where we've gotten with, with characters and um, why the characters in Western comics are so bland now, because they, they don't have any motivations for the characters or drives or uh, any uh, identity to them, apart from their skin color or their sex uh, or whatever, right? Nothing that really defines who they are. And so people, you know, get turned off. That's why the um, American, especially super American superhero comics are doing so bad uh, with Marvel and DC. And we see that really over the last probably five to 10 years. Um, and you know, one of the things that I, I notice is that there's a lot more drive for independent creators like myself, because we don't have someone telling us how these things have to be done. We just do what we want. We we uh, we get out there and we go. This is what we're going to write about, and it's up to you, the reader, or the customer, if you like it or not. Because at the end of the day, uh, we're not writing other people's characters. We're not creating other people. You know, picking up on somebody else's work. As independent creators, we're always creating our own thing. We're, we're, we're coming up with new projects all the time. I've got about four projects right now I'm working on with other artists. Uh, you know, one that I'm going to have to put a plot out myself artistically, right, um, set up on, on the page, the 44 pages that I'm doing, uh, which is uh, based on a nine page. I think it was a 12-minute 12, 12 uh, short film called Torn, which I started doing as a comic book, a color comic book, photo based way back in, I think it was my first one in about 97. And I, I think I, I, I gave up after 12 pages. I just lost my thing and decided, well, you know, I might as well do the better story, which was The Circle. But now, um, you know, my publisher goes, well, you know, you, you started this, you might as well finish it. So I'm like, I really don't want to do it, gritting my teeth. It's like, no, I don't want to do the artwork because I'm not an artist uh, per se, right? And when it comes to illustrations, I'm not that. And I'd rather just go to write and write and write because that's my that's my thing. I can tell stories all day long, uh, you know, create stories, I should say. I mean, last week I was, uh, I think I had a dream and I woke up and I went and wrote, a, plotted out a six issues, issue, uh, multi-universe, uh, sorry, not multi-universe, yeah, parallel universe story, six whole issues. I was like, this is going to happen this episode, uh, issue, this, this, this six plotted it all out. And then I thought, you know what's going to be cool? If I gave six different artists to do each uh, story because it's set in different worlds. So there's steampunk, there's um, sword and sorcery, uh, there is um, future where cars are flying, there is our universe, right? Um, this world, uh, there's another going to be in space, all this. So you could put it all into six episodes. But I was like, that's cool. But why? <laughs> Right, but why? What? What was? Why? What's the purpose? It's like, all right. So, what's the purpose? What's the reason behind why I should? Why somebody would be interested in? This? You know, how do I tie it all together? You know, what's a drive? What's the main character? Uh, what's the side characters? What's their drive? Who are they doing? How do I tie it all up? You know, uh, why is he doing what he's doing? And I'm like. I've been reading, reading a, um, a lot of um, visual novels um, and, you know, just looking at how 
how that all works. And I'm like, you know, I love how um, in the, with visual novels, uh, you know, it's all these different different worlds and universes. Sorry about that, guys. Um, hopefully, it's not very important. Uh, I'm going to check this because people know I'm live, so I could be something to do with live um, to this. Uh, just in case. All right, no, <laughs> sorry. A uh, bit of segue there. Anyway, so uh, like, why? Why you have all these six different worlds? Um, five different worlds, but one normal world, right? So what's the purpose? How do I tie it all together? And I was like, well, I got to have this character and, okay, cool, yeah, yeah. So he's got to appear in all these six worlds. Okay, that's pretty cool, okay. Then what? How do you tie it back in? Why is he doing what he's doing? How come he's, you know, how do he get into these worlds? What? So, you know, how, what, why, when, where? All these questions you've got to ask when you're coming in with the character, especially when you've got a story already in your head, but, and you've got the character, but why is the character going to do what he's going to do? Does he run around in this world? What is his purpose in these worlds? Um, how does it fit in? And so visual novels really helped me with this because, you know, I've been thinking about doing a uh, parallel world um, thing for about maybe three years now. I wrote one a, a couple of years ago. I did, I think, about 30 pages of it. And um, and I was trying to figure out how to, you know, how to make it all together. And um, But this one kind of came together because I was able to look at how visual novels work and how these, these amazing artists, uh, you know, um, using computer graphics, using Honey uh, Select and using Rampy and using, uh, I think, oh, I can't remember the other one, which I find really hard to, um, it's very, um, not hard to play, but hard because it's so big on uh, files uh, to work. Um, it's in the top of my head, but I can't write it. So that's what you, Unity, is it Unity? You guys would know. I think it's Unity. Anyway. I implore you to play visual games just to check out how the story works. These guys spent, you know, I, I think there was one that was about 50 hours long, right? It's like you play through, it's like 50 hours of dialogues and settings and characters and all this. And I'm like, you know, these guys really, really understand storytelling and they're really um, a great at it. So check out itch.io. Uh, and of course, you guys probably know, you can search it out online, the other sites. Um, and there are some amazing work uh, visually and literally, literally, I always have a problem pronouncing that, uh, literature work, um, you know, storytelling, storytelling about, done by visual artists. Uh, visual uh, novelists, I should say, you know, games, you know, and they even put in the game plots in there as well. Um, and it's just playing them has really opened up my um, my brain to connect with how you got, you've got comic books, you've got novels, you've got gaming, and how these three different things work when it comes to visual novels. And I find it really interesting that these guys just get out there independently, just do their thing. And, uh, you know, and of course, you got Patreon people, um, you know, uh, support them on Patreon and I implore you, you know, if you like the work um, of the, you know, of these free, of course, these are all free. You can get them for free downloads of most of them, right? About 90% of them on itch.io, right? And, um, you know, support them. Because independent creators are probably what's going to save these industries um, in the future. Not the mainstream, because the mainstream is dying, as we know. Uh, the big two are suffering horrendously because there's, you, can't, you can only go on for so long before it becomes regurgitating and you're just vomiting out the same stories over and over again. Uh, because it just becomes very stale after a while. And that's why I like um, manga and anime, because 
they will do something and then there's something more and there's something more. It's not like, you know, the same character over and over again. Um, but of course there's 900 <laughs> episodes of, uh, I think it was, is it po no, it's not, I think it's Pokemon, there's 900 episodes. But I mean, of course that is its own thing. So I, I'm, I haven't watched Pokemon, so I don't understand it. I have been told how it works by my friend who loves Pokemon, but it's just not my thing. But of course, there are the ones that are my thing. You know, I thoroughly enjoy, um, uh, I enjoyed the f first two seasons of My Hero Academia. S third season, I haven't even got into that. Uh, I've just, you know, I, I think I can handle about 24 episodes of, um, of a certain series of manga. Um, because I think just a whole, at that point, all the energy and all the, Creativity just goes into that, and um, and that's why I think um, short stories are real. Short series are really good. I work at about six issues because I think um, you can really because I come from a film background, right? Like I went to film school, so hour and a half is my forte when it comes to writing. Uh, of course, I've done you know like about ten episodes of a whole series with about hour and a half movie as a as a pilot. But, uh, and a series, I can, you know, I can do series. But I think doing a six ep six issue series, which equates to about hour and a half of a movie, uh, right, is a really cool way to tell a story because it, it it really crunches you into saying, this is all the time I have to do this. This is all the space I need to fill the story into. And boundaries are really cool when you're writing characters and stories because it stops you from you know, going overboard or getting lost and saying, well, I'm going to go this way and then go, no, no, I've got, a, I've got six issues only, or I've got the set, you know, even maybe three suits or one, all right? Or if I've got 44 pages, I've got to tell the story in this little bit. And you crunch it all down and you think it. But if you like the guys like my hair, I'm um, sorry. Um, oh, I forgot it now. The one with the hat, with the with the with the Aussie straw hat, you guys will know who this is. And um, and um, and Pokemon, right? You got a huge universe just goes on, like like the you know Marvel universe for anime for manga, all right? Uh, with Pokemon and stuff like that, and they just go on and on, and they've got this amazing, you know, they can just go on because they've developed this whole idea from start to finish. They're going to go for this long, um, but. I find shorter stories really cool because I think six, um, a twelve-episode anime, uh, anime or manga, or, or a twenty-volume manga, or um, or a twenty-four episode. That's me. It's crunched it down, and you can put all that energy into it. Um, but when when you're telling a story, you gotta develop that character, and you gotta love that character. You can't just chucks. Yep, yeah, this is this, and that's it. You gotta give that character so much love and passion for it. Now, when I was when I was redo when I was asked to redo, uh, revise the circle, I was like, I really don't want to do this, and I really don't want to do this, because it meant that I had to redo my work. I'm a, I'm a kind of guy who doesn't like redoing things, uh, because or going back to something. I like to just keep that moving forward with new stories, new ideas. But when I got to about issue five, I was like. This is this is really cool. I like these characters. Actually, no. When I got to issue one, I, when I started re redoing the whole thing, I was like, I started enjoying the story again. And then when I got to issue six, I was like, I put it off for two months. I was like, maybe been four months, I think. And I was like, I, uh, this is this is not this is not working for me in my head. The story is not coming right. And then I went right to the end of the story and. I went and dealt with, the, with one of the characters. I went like, huh. This character is a bit weak. His, his drive isn't enough for what he's doing here right now. I mean, it's, it's, it's over. The book story's over. And I'm like, I need to give this character something more. So I did. I gave this character something more to talk about, to really, really, really force his guts onto the table, right? Put his heart on the table. 
for the reason why he's where he is and what he's done or is about to do or whatever his motives. And then the other character, right? I was like, so why, what, why is he supporting this other character? Right? There isn't enough drive right now. So I went back and redid his character as well. I went to like the start of issue six and I went, you know what? I need to really give this character something as well. Now you can do that with a comic book, right? You can't do that with the movie because the movie's already out, right? You can't go and fix the movie now because they do do that really. Before it's sometimes before movies have been out, they screen test it, right? You go, you check it out. And I did do that with the, with the circle. I had to go and go, oh, dude, the, the music was way too loud. Let's fix that. So I just sent it back to the audio guy, um, Blair Esplund, and I went, okay. And he went and spent a couple of days right, redoing the whole, imagine the whole hour and a half movie and you've got to go through all of it and turn all the volume of the music down and raise, I think, the volume of the speeches, I um, mean, of the vocals. Um, and so the screen tests happen and they have to pay extra, or sometimes they have in the contract, the actors have to come back if, the, if they have to do reshoots, that's what they call them, reshoots in movies, right? And they have to sit back and have to go through the, re, um, sometimes they read the reshoot, it's very costly. And then they also have to do the ADR, which is audio, uh, dialogue replacement, which what which is what happens with anime when they turn into English. Now with anime, the other thing there is a bit, a bit of talk about from actual um, rewriters. Let's call them rewriters of uh, anime into English. So the rewriters try to put their own little twist on things. I've noticed this because I watch a lot of anime, and it's often I like to have the um, subtitles on because I. I'm used to watching subtitles because I've, I watch a lot of European movies and a lot of Japanese movies uh, and Korean movies, right? Um, and even when I watch Hindi movies with my family sometimes, uh, I'll have the subtitles on because I really can't pick up. Some of the um, dialogues are a bit different uh, and I can't pick up on the on the actual pronunciations for the words they have because it's an older, um, older Hindi version of what we speak in, um, out, in the um, diaspora, which is outside of India. So, what I've noticed with anime outside of uh, Japan is that a lot of rewriters of anime, when they go to rewrite them into English, they're not Japanese. So, rather than actually, and I understand ADR, and I've said this uh, on Twitter as well, because people always go, oh no, you don't, you know, you guys, you know, when they go about talk about this translation thing, you guys don't understand how ADR works, how dialogue works when you're trying to move, mix it with the mouths. I'm like, actually, we had to do that as part of our learning thing. We had to take a five minute uh, uh, film and to replace all the sound and all the music and all the dialogue into our own voices, right? And that was fun, but I didn't like it. It's it really hard work. I understand that as well. It is hard work, but so, but rather than trying to use the translation that is there in the way it's there or in the way it's meant, they replace it into English. Um, they replace the words in a way that it's derogatory. Often, now it's like some, a lot of times. I wouldn't say often, but a lot of times. And if you watch it with the subtitles on, you go, that doesn't make sense. Why do they, that doesn't make sense. I can read it, I can see exactly what the Japanese translation is here, right over here, right? Sorry, where are we? Right over across here, I can read it here, right? And I can see that the characters are off screen. So how if you, if the character isn't even there and the words of what he's saying is there, how can you still put other words that are not there into his mouth, right? I mean, off screen, of course. And even that, that makes, doesn't make sense when they do that. I remember one character who was just uh, berated and I was always watching and I was like, that's not what she said in Japanese. That's, that's opposite of what she said in, in, you know, in English to what she, he said in, um, what she said in Japanese to him. And, and, it kind of loses the characters, uh, what they what they 
original writer creator is trying to do with the character. He's already given her the debt that drives the thing, or her, him, right? And now you're going to change the dialogue and the words, which are very important, right? And the meaning of them to suit whatever you think is going to be, you know, works with you, you know, behind whatever you're trying to do with an agenda, whatever you have. And I find that very terrible because what you're taking away is what the creator's done and putting your own voice into somebody else's work. And this is why I think independent creators have a great um, power and freedom over the mainstream creators because it means that they're not stuck into uh, some big box, you know, uh, of course, I'm, I'm, before I saw the boundaries and working within the boundaries and confines of whatever story you're telling and the uh, issues, like sex issues, but they're not, these amazing creators, they have their own freedom to do whatever they want. And then now you're going to come and say, I want it done my way. I'm going to translate it my way. This is how it's going to be. And you're going to like it or lump it. And I think, and then the fans go, well, actually, I've just read the manga and I've watched the anime and I'm watching the subtitles and it doesn't make sense the way you've changed it. So characters, when you're writing characters, it's very important to develop them with a drive, with a love interest, whatever. Uh, even if they don't have a love interest, it doesn't even matter whatever the drive is, you know, you got to really give them a meat on their bones, right? The character without any, meat on their bones is just a bland, bland, bland thing that people are just go, meh. You know, it's like you watch Harry Potter, all that amazing. Why is Harry Potter so great? Because he's got all this very, very cool things or people around him in this universe, but he himself has a drive. He's a very lovable, likable character, you know, um, and so on. And so that's why often, right from the start to the end, He's a very funny, very adventurous, very driven person right from the start. He's like, I've spent six years searching and waiting for this day. And now this day has come. And then he's disappointed because it doesn't go the way he does. He wants it to go. And he then keeps, and then he spends another year or two, I think. I can't remember exactly how many, how long it was that he, before. It, he's able to again get the chance again and again and again and but he keeps going he's got his drive i will right i will turn you back into a a um, human again i'll turn you back into the person i you know that my big sister my my um my caretaker you know that i person i look up to again right Everything else, I forget all the bad things you're doing or good things you're doing. I'm just going to try to save you no matter what. And and you, and this character just goes and goes. And I'm even going, dude, I just, at this point, I would give up, all right? And then I go, yeah, you shouldn't have given up. You're good. You're good. Just keep going. You know, and I'm, I'm really excited. You know, and, uh, you know, go for it. Go for it. And then I'm like just made again. And so it's like this really cool very cool story of these um, these characters and also the school they're from and uh, you know and it's just a brilliant brilliant show so I'm just gonna finish it off there and say look you gotta you gotta watch the show and see how how they really really the um, the creators um, the artists and the writer have really developed these characters to be very human very uh, even though like fantastic fantastic world uh, sword and sorcery, right? Um, dragons, right? Magic, all that. Um, so many amazing things in the series. And it's only 24 episodes long, but I mean, hey, you know, 22 minutes long. And it's just really good, guys. I just want you to check it out um, and watch it. I mean, I I've tried not to spoil it. I've only talked about this character because... I think they really, really did a good job on this character back in 94, right? In the manga, and then 96 or 98 in the anime. And at the end of the day, right, you want to sit back and enjoy it and just 
have fun with a good anime. That's an old anime. I, I kind of enjoy older animes because even the new ones are really cool as well. Uh, you know, it's just because they just do really good characters. And I think, uh, and they tell really good stories. And um, also, hey, let me let me plug, um, before I go, let me plug um, horizonsandcomics.com, right? Go check out the website. Um, have a look at what, there's some free comics on there you can download and read or read on there. Uh, you can also, um, you know, pre-order books. Um, they have a whole bunch of um, um, G.I. Joe fan comics that they do there. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of free ones, right? I guess, uh, and all different types. So, um, and also there's some, every now and then they do Kickstarter for comics or, or you know, Check them out. So risesandcomics.com, I'm part of that company. So I'm plugging, um, but, um, you know, independent comics and independent creators, gamers, um, all that is where it's going, where the future lies. So if you want good stories, check out independent creators uh, and on, like like us, on risesandcomics.com or itch.io for gaming, light novels and other gaming stuff. Uh, you can drop a couple bucks and get the game free, uh, download for free, or just get it for free. And if you decide to, hey, I like this game, drop a couple bucks on there. Um, but do check out Orphan, all right? Sorcerers, Stab or Orphan is the official name. Uh, Sorcerers Orphan is, I think, the Japanese for it. Uh, but yeah, enjoy the show. I think I enjoyed it. Otherwise, I wouldn't be talking about it. And I, and I waited a whole week to talk about it because I was like, oh, I don't have the energy to talk about it. Or I might get it wrong. I don't want to, you know, make a, you know, go on a phone attendant somewhere else. But as a character, these characters in these shows are really good. And like I said, it's 27 odd years old. But they stand the test of time because they're a really good show and a really good character. And it's like watching a Dungeon and Dragon anime, right? It's that cool. So, Kakite Ano, thank you for hanging out with me. Uh, I'll catch you next time. And wherever you are, be safe. And farewell from Whangarei, New Zealand.